We finally got him to sit down and work on terrain. And he's actually going to show it to us now. About time, Slacker. Welcome to Terrain Bits, everybody. Uh, today we're going to take a look at building some campfires. Yep, these will work great for markers, objective markers. Um, you can put them in a campfire scene for some terrain pieces. Uh, and they're really, really easy to make. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is some pea gravel. That's uh, this stuff right here. Uh, it's really cheap. Usually you find it at uh, like hardware stores, big box stores in big bags. You can get tons of it for really cheap and it lasts forever. So this is a great thing to have because it's got a lot of uses. Um, so this is what you're going to be starting with is the pea gravel. So, we're going to take a cup, put some pea gravel in there. Uh, and you can put extra if you want. I'll show you what you can do with the extra here in a minute. Um, but just put some pea gravel in there and get some white glue get some white glue in there and get you a I'm using a popsicle stick to stir with um, and just stir this up real good until all the stones are coated with glue so it's all stirred now what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna have some wax paper this is wax paper not parchment paper it's got wax on it so that makes it easier to get the stone off of it after it dries. So you get some wax paper, just dump your stone on there. Get it all off. Now I know that doesn't look much like a campfire yet, but we'll get there. So then you just take your fingers and poke, poke a hole in the middle and just kind of shape it the way you want to shape your your stone ring. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect and the beauty of this is you can have a bunch of them and because they're done like this they all look very different. Now here's the hardest part about this whole thing. You have to leave this alone for at least 24 hours. You have to leave it a lot longer than the glue is dry on the top. You'll see the glue dry on the top and you'll feel it and it'll be all dry and you'll think, oh, I'll just pop it off of there. Well, the glue underneath, I guarantee you, will not be dry. So that's the hardest part of this whole thing is just being patient enough to wait for that to dry. Now, fortunately, just like on the cooking shows, um, I've got one pre-made here, so we don't have to wait for this one to dry. I'll muck with it later. Now, before we get to that, I just wanted to show you um, I had some extra when I was making my other campfire rings. Um, and this stuff is great for this pea gravel. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. So, for instance, I've got um, you know just some some random blobs of pea gravel, and that works great for um, just rubble piles. Um, these things here, like if you've got a pirate board or something, you can imagine these sitting out in the water. They could be like rock jetties. So if you have extra, just glob some on your wax paper. It costs next to nothing. Um, and if you get a great pile that's something you like, you can use. You paint it up real quick. It's, uh, it's really easy and cheap terrain. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and paint, get the first coat of paint on this. I'm just using this um, pewter gray color. It's just a medium gray. Uh, I'm going to put it on there without any, um, without watering it down because I want a fairly thick coat on there. Now you can leave this um, just as natural stone color. It depends on the terrain you're building, but you may want it as just a, like a field stone. This has got all these nice colors in it. Um, so you don't have to paint it gray. You could just leave it like this and skip the painting part that I'm going to show you and do the rest. Okay, so I said I'm not watering this down. Now I did dip the brush in water just to get the brush wet. Um, so I guess technically I am watering the paint down a little bit. But 
not that much. I just wanted the brush itself to be moist. So I'm just going to load the paint on here and we'll just knock paint on this stuff. Alright, so we're done with the gray paint there. Um, I'm just going to let that sit and dry. And because I put it on thick, there's I'm not sure you can see this in the video. In fact, I'm quite sure you can't. But there are some places underneath where I didn't quite get the gray paint on. That's okay because we're going to black wash this before we dry brush it. So once this is dry, we'll come back and take a look at the next step. All right. So now the paint is dry. The next thing I'm going to do is I actually just took a little piece of cardboard, cut it out to fit up under here so the edges weren't sticking out, but all of the um, inside is filled. Um, now this really is only if you're going to use these standalone um, like this as markers or something. If you're going to put them on, on uh, as part of a bigger piece, you don't need to do this. So I'm just going to flock it real quick. So I'm just going to throw some glue on here. Um, and I've just got a little bit of brown flock. You're not going to see a lot of it, uh, but you just want to get the cardboard kind of covered up and then let that dry it a few minutes and then I'll get the flock out of there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I've just got some uh, black ink wash and I'm just gonna throw the, the wash all over all this to deepen it up. All right, so let's start putting together the rest of the pieces we need. Uh, what I've got here is just um, what we're gonna make the base of the fire out of. It's just some toothpicks, round toothpicks and I just snapped them with my fingers to the lengths that I thought I'd need. I'm going to use this really dark brown to just kind of paint these up. So I'll just get these knocked out real quick uh, and then we'll come back and do the rest. Alright, we've got our wood done, let it dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to come back uh, with the same pewter gray not watered down and just do um, a heavy overbrush of that same color uh, now that we've got it um, we've got the ink on it I'm just gonna overbrush back that same color so this is gonna pretty much cover almost all of the surface um, we're just gonna have the, the deep recesses still being um, pretty dark so that should give some depth to the piece and then we'll come back and uh, dry brush some lighter grays on there. Alright, so the gray overbrushing is done So, and the sticks are drying, this is drying, so the next thing we need to work on is the flame. Uh, so what I've done, we're just going to use a Q-tip. So I've just uh, sliced a cotton Q-tip in half and what we're going to do is just kind of tease it out a little bit. You've got to be kind of gentle with this and just kind of twist it and pull it out, pull the cotton out. Now some of this cotton's probably going to come off before you're done, before you get it uh, looking right. Alright, so this one's going to be kind of short, and but that's alright because every flame is different. So I'm just going to scrap a piece of foam here. I'm going to stick it in so that I have something to uh, hold on to while I'm painting and set it up. So let me get the paints ready and we'll come back and give this thing a paint. Alright, so for the flame, four colors you're going to want. Well, technically one of them is not a color, but anyway. Um, got yellow, orange, red, and black. Don't need much of, of each, I've just got a drop of each in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with yellow at the base and just kind of start painting the cotton until it looks like flames. So you start with yellow uh, all the way around and I usually will try to paint kind of in a spiral uh, motion to kind of follow how I was doing the flame. So you start with the yellow, you work your way into the orange, then the red, and then put a little bit of black at the top, worked in with the red for smoke. Now not too much, just some little hints of black. and. Um, And that's how you get your flame. All right, so just um, you know, just keep working it up in you know spiral motion. Let the paint kind of twist the 
cotton for you as well. Work in a little red here. You want each layer to overlap the, the last one um, so that you get some color blending. All right, so now the flame's done. Uh, we're just going to set that aside to dry. All right, so we're ready for a dry brush coat here. Um, I'm just taking that original pewter gray and mixing it about half and half with white. Um, and that's what I'm going to use as my next dry brush color. And I'm just going to lightly go over the rocks on the top. You don't need to worry about getting too much down in the middle because we're going to do something else with that here in a minute. So I'm just going to lightly dry brush the top here. Alright, and then I'm going to come back um, with just plain white with almost no paint on my brush. Almost nothing. Wipe almost all of it off. And just very lightly touch the, the tips. Okay. So that dry brushing is basically done. Um, now I'm going to let that dry for just a minute and then we'll come back and I'll show you what else we're going to do to these rocks. Okay, so once we have our rock and our flame in here, uh, in a real campfire you'd actually see a little bit of glow on the stone. So we're going to try to simulate that. The way we're going to do it is we're going to use our same um, yellow, orange, and red, and we're going to very lightly dry brush the inside. So I'm going to start with the yellow with almost no paint on my brush, very light dry brush. And I'm going to go on the inside, so it's going to be the same way we painted the flame. I'm going to go on the inside and just very lightly dry brush the inside layer with the yellow. And then I'm going to go back and get a little bit of orange get almost all the paint off of my brush. Go a little higher on the rocks. Very lightly dry brush on some orange, just in a circle. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the red. Same thing, hardly anything on the brush. And then very lightly dry brush on the inside. Now you want to not go much past the actual top of the rocks um, because the outside of the rocks wouldn't be getting this glow. So you want to try to stay towards the interior and not go past the top. And just give it a very light, um, very, very light dry brush. Now I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the video, but I think you can see some of it there. Alright, so I think... Uh, we're pretty much done with all the painting. Um, now it's just down to assembling the pieces. So I'm going to let everything dry thoroughly and then we will come right back and do that. Alright, so the first part of the assembly here is, is we're going to put um, glue the rocks on top of this board. So I'm just going to put a little white glue um, on the bottom inside of these rocks here. Make sure this lines up so that we don't see any cardboard through there or hanging over the outside edge and just stick it on there. So, very simple. Now we've got dirt down in the bottom, which is good. So now we want to get the sticks on there. Um, I usually end up using uh, some tweezers for this because these sticks get a little bit tricky to handle um, and get glued down properly. So, but pretty simple. I just put some glue on the ends or however they fit, wherever you need to glue them to get them to stick. Alright, so we're going to let this dry all dry very thoroughly, at least for an hour or two, uh, before we mess with putting the flame on. And then once we get the flame on, uh, we're done. Alright, so now that this is dry, uh, what I did is I took the flame that we painted and I just chopped the end of the Q-tip off so it's flat. We're going to glue it in here. Now we got a bit of, a, of an issue. These sticks aren't close together enough to hold this up. Um, so there's a couple of things we could do. We could either say, well that's okay and glue it in there because the flames aren't just going to be sitting on top of the stick. They'll probably be all the way down. 
um, and nobody's going to notice anyway. Uh, we could chop the flame off so it sits there, or we could pull the sticks up and move the sticks in closer together. I'm just going to glue the, um, the flame in right there. And this flame is a bit small for this fire, but in this case the flame is just getting started, so it hasn't grown to as big as it's going to be. And that's okay. Glued in there, and then we're going to let that set. And so really, uh, the only thing that's left to do is to give it a shot of uh, poly and let that dry after this white glue dries of course and then we're done with it we've got our little piece now the flames on these I did a bit different um, and you can kinda of see a they're bigger at the base and B they've got kind of a, a more pronounced uh, swirling effect now the way I did this was I just took some cotton balls and stretched one out into like a worm and then wrapped it uh, in a spiral pattern around a wooden dowel and that's how I got this shape and then I painted it on there I can tell you though that painting that was a really really hard thing to do um, because the the cotton kept wanting to move up there was no way to hold it down there may have been some things I could do but this was much more difficult to paint however I like the effect better than this one um, personally um, now that's not to say everybody will my wife actually likes this one better um, than the other ones but um, yeah it's just whatever you like better so play around with it um, there's there's a few ideas for you um, and just see which one you like best well I'm glad to be back doing this guys and I hope you found it useful and entertaining I've got another project coming up with some more peak gravel but you'll have to wait and see what that's all about we'll see you next time bye <laughs>